Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is B from Kongs R Us, and welcome to The Next Level. This is my weekly podcast show where we bring you next level things, guests, community members, and projects. But today, I wanted to have another great open discussion with the community and talk about why findings for the evolution of RK1UP joysticks. Now, we've had lots of different joysticks come out from RK1UP in their cabinets over the years, but most recently in a lot of recent reviews, people have been saying, like, hey, you know what? I, I think the, the sticks feel better. And there, it's true, they feel better, but what's the reason behind why they feel better? And I really took a deep dive into the different joysticks that I've had, um, that I pulled out, that I've replaced over the years. And uh, I found some really interesting information that I wanted to share with the group here and uh, get some insight on ultimately what I'm going to do with upgrading my Marvel versus Capcom 2, which I absolutely need to uh, you know, make sure I'm on point with the latest and greatest because I want to get in the lab. I want to learn how to get better and play um, as soon as Arcade 1UP gets Marvel vs. Capcom 2 online. It needs to happen soon. It's been it's been too long. It's past mid, mid-October, right? Um, I'm hoping that gets fixed really soon. I know there's a lot of people that still want Blitz online, but I want Marvel vs. Capcom 2 because that's the cabinet that I have. I've been having a lot of fun playing um, Marvel vs. Capcom 1 on the cabinet, even though I've already played it for you know great couple of years already in my MVC one. Uh, I've played over a hundred matches now on my MVC two cabinet on Marvel vs. Capcom one, testing out the new joystick, making sure it feels okay. But I have some thoughts about it and I've, I've been using the new Samwa buttons that I replaced already. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. I have a whole slew of parts in front of me that I'm going to be going over in just a little bit. I'm going to break down everything from not only the joysticks themselves, but even to the micro switches. This is the key folks this is the reason why the joysticks feel better we're going to talk about micro switches we're going to open some up talk about how they even work and and why you feel they're better because they are but i want to say hello what's up biggie d's here what's going on oh yes there's lots of overheating issues with the pcb as well i've heard i just watched moats review talking about overheating stuff i saw some issues with Soso bam bam i haven't seen that yet playing as long on MVC one. I've had a couple of hour, couple of hour sessions playing MVC one, not MVC two on the cabinet. But um, yeah, I'm gonna definitely keep an eye out for that because I think performance issues when you're playing a long time definitely impacts that. Made in Canada what says let's go. Xavier Gabriel is here, just got his yesterday. What's up, what's up? Carlos Sanchez is here, what's up, man? Shingo Bingo says, MBC2 cab is your first arcade one-up cabinet and you hate the sticks and buttons. You keep hearing that the sticks are a lot better now, so you shudder at the thought what they used to be like. We're going to get into that. If this is your first cab, you came in at a decent time. Sir Sega is building his cabinet right now. That's interesting. Seamart the Entertainer says he loves that Macross tee. Uh, this was a custom Macross, I think, 20th anniversary shirt that I actually got from somebody that visited Japan and picked it up at the time. 20th anniversary, 2004, 2003, long time ago. Ace Move says, what's up? Do we have any ET or updates for when online or MVC2 will be up? Fortunately, I have zero inside information about when that's going to be happening. Um, I could probably text John and see if he has any updates. We really haven't heard any communication from Arcade One Up, um, either informally um, or officially. I would really love to hear the Arcade One Up marketing team address both the online issues for Marvel versus Capcom 2 and NFL Blitz. I think that's what we need is an official update from the company to be able to let us know what's happening with those cabinets would be my preferred method of choice. But... If we hear another week or so, I might text John and see if he has any updates. Uh, not yet. What's up? Does your cab save Hive scores? Um, my Marvel vs. Tom, the, the Marvel vs. Capcom 2, when I played it through, beat the game, and I turned off the cabinet and turned it back on, I saw my high score save on MVC 2. And somebody else said it wasn't saving for them, so I don't know if it's a fluke. I haven't gone back and checked it to see if I'm still the number one score. So I'm going to have to go back and double check that. I know the older games, MVC 1, I tested those high score saves when you turn off the cab and turn it back on, and that absolutely does not save. So I can absolutely be sure that that doesn't save. When I tested MVC2 online, I'm sorry, not online, high scores, it did save and then it went away. I mean, it, I turned off the cab and it was still there. So I'm not sure what those issues are. What's up, Greg? Shingo Bingo says, Justin Wong is keeping rather quiet about MVC2 cab after release. You know, he, he definitely does his own thing. I think he's only a part-time contractor. I would love to hear from him a little bit more about officially what's happening with MVC2. Because I know that's uh, his reputation is attached to it. When I spoke to him, he was like, feels a lot of pressure. So really appreciate that. 
CMART says he has two extra CPU fans you're considering installing for the MVC2 to help with the heat. That's going to be a huge issue for longevity. If there are PCB heating issues, um, I think uh, there's some potential solutions we could do to do some cooling, but we shouldn't have to do that, right? I don't know if the company had thought about hardcore players playing for two, three, four, five hours straight on a cabinet. But it's possible with a cabinet like this. If you're playing really long sets, it's easy to play hours in a cabinet. I played for the last three, four nights, uh, usually around between uh, 10 p.m. Pacific to about you know 12 a.m. Pacific, about midnight or so. I'm usually on the MVC1 lobby. So if you want to come find me tonight or any other night, check me out. Kongs R Us, MVC2 is kind of my handle on the MVC2 cabinet. But I'm just trying to get matches in and test out you know the gameplay. And I'll play for a couple hours every day. So I haven't seen anything else there. Uh, Vessel is here. What's up, Moat? Thanks for sending people over. Melor Malik is here. Glad to catch you live. Ray plays games. I played a set with him yesterday. Very, very cagey, but we had a fun set as well. All right. Pagshim said, good review, Moat. Oh, man. Wow to see you here, Moat. Cooling mod ideas. Let's hear, the, uh, hear them. Um, so, yeah, today we're going to talk a little bit more about the joysticks again. Uh, thank you again, Moat, for sending people over. Folks that are just joining in. Uh, we're going to talk about the evolution of our K1Up joysticks. And, again, why why they really do truly feel better. So I'm going to, um, <laughs> sub easy market again, kicking my butt. I get so mad when I play easy market, he plays Strider Ryu with the devil lock trap for NBC one. If you don't know, I consider him one of my rivals, but he's already a red rank now. So beyond me being a rival, but I get so mad when he traps me in the corner. I'm literally like pounding my fist on the control panel. When I get so mad, I like my, my, my fist hurts easy market when we were playing the other day. But and afterwards, I'm like, GG's, you got me. But uh, man, that guy can lay down the smacketh down. Since he dedicated, says the joystick feels pretty good. Yeah, we're going to get that, man. We're going to get to that. All right, so it's a fan base. When MBCT goes online, oh, man. So, so I'm going to be in the lab taking you down. I, I still have memories of you beating me in fight, Kate. So that's going to be going on. You don't mind the joysticks at all, MBC2. They feel good. There's a reason, Eves. So we're going to get into that. Potion Sword Run, what's up, man? Thanks for being here. It's okay, Easy Market. Keep. Keep keep training me. I got to learn how to be patient. I got to learn how to be better. Your LCD Plexi came in with a giant scratch on it. You haven't gotten back to me after you requested a picture of the H panel and receipt. How long did it take for a response? Um, they're usually pretty decent if they have the parts in stock. When they don't have stuff in stock, that's when they can like be really delayed. So I would follow up with them and double check with that and make sure they keep sending you stuff. That really sucks. What's up, Peter Porker? Easy market. and <laughs> Got me with that trap too. It's very frustrating. All right, so I'm going to spend the next about 10 minutes or so going into my deep dive of the joystick. So if you're in chat and not catching anything quickly, I'll try to go back and catch it up. But for the main topic of today's show, the evolution of RK1 of joysticks, we're going to go down a trip down memory lane. Yes, we're going to go through every single RK1 of joystick that has existed that I know of, at least for the ones that I've had from their Gen 1 cabs to their Gen 3 cabs to kind of more recent versions of the cabs uh, to the newest version that they have in these iterations of cabs. And so um, looking at these four joysticks that you see here, what they are in, in a nutshell, I would say are Sanwa clones, right? So we know that this right here is a Sanwa JLF uh, joystick, which is one of the most, I would say, you know, king of fight sticks that, or just in any general arcade stick that is used and really synonymous with a true arcade joystick for this type of field. Yes, you could either have a bat top screw onto it, you could either have a ball top screw onto it. So the Samwa joystick really is kind of the, uh, you know, the model of a, of a good stick that RK went up is trying to clone. This is what they were trying to do. And it's made up of a couple of different components, right? So you have your shaft here, you have your actual plate here, you have your actuator, some nylon screws in there. There's actual spring that actually moves the tension back to center. Um, and then there's a couple of things down here that we're gonna get into as well. So I wanna break down the sand wall and why it's the king, right? And then we gotta compare it to the other ones and see why they've improved to get to the best ammo clone that they can. So first off, the gate. The gate is the restrictor gate, which uses right now a square gate, which is standard, is your typical eight-way gate, which just hits all four corners and then eight different joystick directions that you have. Um, and this gate uh, is replaceable. You could actually replace it with other circular gates. This is a sand wall circular gate where there's no hitting the mark there. You also have an octagonal gate too, which you can put on, which actually hits all the corners really easily. So those are different aftermarket gates that you can get. So in a sand wall, you can pop these off. You can pop off the other gates, 
But here's the really most interesting part of the Samwall uh, micro switches. When you get to them, this is a micro switch that is so soldered onto this PCB here, and it has a five pin connection point there. So sorry for the little fuzziness. I'm gonna see if it can get there to be focused. So this micro switch, let's look at the micro switch, the tension of the micro switch itself. I've tried to look up this micro switch. This is a Sanwa. It's an Omron is the actual company design that's on there. I tried to look up the stats for this and I don't see this particular stats on this, but I did find a replacement joystick for it. And it's this, it's a Sandwall MS 02P micro switch. These are $4 retail for just a replacement micro switch. So there's already $16 worth of micro switches just in your sandwall stick if you're going to try to re find a replacement. So this is just one site that sells it. Um, there's no other kind of information about kind of the the, the weight of the, the micro switch when you're pressing it down, um, but it does feel pretty darn clicky when you're pressing it. It's heavier than a cherry micro switch, which people are used to. So this quality of, of the micro switch is key in how it feels. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to take a knife, a watch or a watch knife, we're going to pop open one of the micro switches and you're going to see why the quality of this is so good. So if you've never opened a micro switch before, this is what I'm doing just so you can see the innards and the guts. So we're just going to use that watch knife. You can use a flathead screwdriver if you're ever interested in doing this. I don't recommend this if you, if you don't need to. But this, look at the guts of this micro switch. You have the lever here that's pressing down this brass plated kind of metal part here. And when you press it down, it clicks and it the contactors touch, and this is a really smooth mechanism here um, using kind of that press micro switch there for really smooth press. This is the gold standard of micro switches that are inside your Sanwa joystick. This is why it's such good quality because the quality of the click comes back in a nice springy tension. It doesn't get stuck. The quality of the, um, the press, you know, from the time you press it down to when it touches the actual uh, connector here, you know, there's a slight little like slight little press clicker and delay. It happens almost simultaneously, but that is, you know, part of that, that input that people really like. So that's the gold standard. This is a Sanwa micro switch. That's it. We're trying to replicate this. All right. So now that you've seen the gold standard, let's go through the evolution of our key one of joysticks and see how bad they started trying to replicate this back from their gen one um a street fighter cab this came from a street fighter 2 2018 cabinet and this was their very first stick and i can already tell you just even moving this joystick feels like it feels like shit like the the spring tension is terrible look at the backside and how they tried to clone even the gate restrictor there it's a it's a four-way gate but like when you move it it kind of even gets stuck it doesn't even feel like it will go back to center really easily it's so hard but let's pop off the gate this is an fs street fighter 2 um I opened this up and I laughed at how terrible these joysticks were. Look, this is the very first joystick that RK went up ever came up with. And there were these levers here for a micro switch that, you know, it's it's kind of like mushy on pressing it in one direction. And when you kind of press it into a corner, it kind of presses two levers. So the actuator here is a little bit too small to get to the corner. It's a terrible joystick. And I was like, holy, holy hell, this is so bad. But I wanted to even dive further, like what the heck is inside of this micro switch, this lever of a micro switch that's being pressed down. And some lever micro switches aren't bad, um, but this one is absolutely terrible. I'm trying to get that little clickiness there. You have to press it down a certain amount to be pressed in. But let's bust this open you so you can see what's, what's inside of this micro switch here that made it so bad. Again, that clickingness of the micro switch and the internals really helps determine the quality of these joysticks. All right, so I did this once before while I opened this, oh, there it is. Okay, so that's the side I need to pop open. Using a watch knife to do this makes things a lot easier. All right, so here we go. Slowly popping this open so you can see the guts of it. All right, um, did I lose a part already? I think I might've lost something already. I think I lost the lever part. Okay, <laughs> look, this this joystick is all jacked up. I already lost the um, the lever part. Or I, oh, what did it, what did I do with it? I think it fell out. So this lever was in here, stuck like that, and then there was a little clicking piece of it there. But you can already see it's using like this spring mechanism here. And maybe I me I gotta open up another one. Sorry, 
I got to do this where I, I got to do it carefully so I don't pop anything else up. Let's do it one more time. Let's pop open this. There it is. This is going to go into the trash afterwards anyway, so I'm not going to cry if I lose lose any more of these parts. But I want to make sure I show you guys the guts of this terrible, terrible micro switch from the Gen 1 Street Fighter 2 cabinet and why it was so bad. Okay, so we're, we're slowly taking this off. There it is. Okay, so here. Here it is. This is still the micro switch with the levers pressing it down. And then you actually need the tension of the other thing. But when you're pressing down that little micro switch, it's using the tension of the spring to press that connection there. And so you're not even pressing it consistently. It has to go down a certain length for it to just use that spring to tension and touch the micro switch. And that's that connection point that you're getting. So it's not the greatest part. It's using a spring, that spring can get loose over time. It was just not a really good experience using this. I would always feel like I was missing some sort of inputs, even though there's a clicking sound. This micro switch on a Gen 1 cabinet was terrible. Super, super trash, super trash. All right, so that's the trashy Gen 1 joystick. Uh, and then came along the Gen, I would say Gen 3 joystick. So this is joysticks that were inside of NBA Jams, uh, inside of my Marvel's Capcom 1 cabinet, um, even... Uh, I think a lot of their their standard cabs after the Gen 1 cabinets were using this standard stick. Even has Arcade went up branded on the side of it. They got a little bit better in terms of the actual stick itself. Um, you can see the, already the improvements of the shaft design looking a little bit more like a genuine Sanwa. And then the actual gate itself looking a little bit more standard. This standard size gate actually work and you could replace sand wall parts on this if you're going to the old ones um, i don't think the old sand wall uh, gates would have worked on these ones here so once you got to this style of design uh, you could actually replace sand wall gates if you wanted to improve it um, but these were gen 3 micro switches that you see here and these were, were used again this came out of a big blue um, either a Marvel's Capcom 1 cabinet and be jam and the way you can tell is once you pop off the actual um, restrictor gate you can look at the micro switches themselves and the micro switches are blue. So this is a blue micro switch that is listed that's here for this type of joystick. Uh, definitely kind of improved range jumping into the corners. You got rid of the lever switches there and each of these um, kind of clickingness felt a little bit better. They weren't the best sticks. I mean, they were kind of okay, but they, they still were near, not near the sound wall quality. And there's still another good reason for that. So again, let's, uh, let's open up one of these blue ones here. So you can see the inside of this blue micro switch from a Gen 3 cabinet. So again, this is what Marvel vs. Capcom 1 used for stock cabinets. A big blue used this as well. I also double checked and NBA Jam used this. And in fact, I've gotten more cabs this year and um, I have a Dragon's Lair cabinet. The Dragon's Lair cabinet still also still use the same stick design. So this, this has been one of their standard sticks for, I guess, a non-fighting non game stick because it was in dragon's lair too it's used in other things as well but here is the blue micro switch and look it's getting a little bit better this is getting closer to that sand wall design that we saw there right so this is the sand wall and you see kind of like that metal brass point there let's see if we can focus in a little bit all right so this is that new micro switch there the, the blue one when you press it down it's still using a spring tension to be able to press down far enough to flip it down and touch the connection points. It's a, a slightly, it's definitely improved from the Gen 1 cabinets, but it's still not that same quality that we saw in the sand walls, right? This is pretty much still relying on that spring tension. It's not consistent all the way down. You have to press it down almost all the way down past this threshold point to be able to get that clicking sound to press down. So this is a Gen 3 micro switch that you've seen. You can tell because it has this blue micro switch. All right, so this, this came off of my Marvel vs. Capcom 2 cabinet. And this is a different brand new joystick that I think they started using on the Marvel vs. sorry, um, MK30th cabinet. So I have my MK30th uh, control deck. This is one of the newest decks that came out. The first design of that, uh, that the MK30th design cabinet, the midway shape cab. So if that's the new standard design, Starting with the MK30th controllers, they've started using this new stick. And in fact, I didn't realize this. The MK30th um, gate here 
is actually not even like a square gate. It even acts more like a circular gate. And so it's almost like this round gate. You're not really sitting in any particular corner. It's like this rounded off square oval shape here, almost like a circle, but not quite. So it's interesting that the gate they use, but starting with MK30, this new design stick uh, was here. I'm sure the Shinko Hadouken and Yoga Flame Cabinets have it. And now Marvel vs. Capcom 2 has this exact same stick. So what's different about this particular stick? First off, the, the different gate options. So one, MK30 had the round gate. Uh, I think the Shinku Hadouken Yoga Flames came with both a square gate and an option to change out the octagon gate. And MBC2 by stock has an octo gate. So I, they're just picking which cabs to say, I think an octo gate sounds good. I think a square gate sounds good. Like, I don't know how they're picking the gates. I did like how Yoga Flame and Shinku had the options to replace the gates per preference. I really wish they would have done that with all their cabs. Uh, moving forward but right now you're stuck with an octo gate unless you change this out but is this stick better and how close is it to the sandwall clone i mean uh, as a sandwall clone to a real sandwall like do you need to replace this particular joystick um i played again 100 matches with this joystick so far it performs i would say if i had to like put a number on it i'd say it's like 75% to 85% of a the feel of a sandwall stick and i don't i don't know how to measure that, but there was, I felt like there were still some inputs I was missing a little bit using this joystick, but the quality of the stick itself, the spring and the quality of going to each of the micro switches does feel better. It's these black micro switches now that you can tell like the actual button here, and it's different already in terms of design than the last one that we have. They're slightly different. And let's pop one of these open so you can see exactly why the joysticks are better now. So the question is, should you upgrade? Well, let's take a look. Let's take a look at the latest micro switches that are in the RK one up now. And this really surprised me. Look at this. All right, here it is. So this is the newest micro switch inside the Marvel versus Capcom 2 cabinets. Look at that. So this is now utilizing a kind of not, a, the, um, there is still a spring there, but the style and design of this micro switch and how it feels feels way closer to any sand wall than we've seen in the past. Let me pull up again for those that are just joining. We showed off what a real genuine sand wall micro switch looks like. And this is what it looks like. You have kind of this really nice brass plate there that um, you know easily gets pressed and it, it makes that connection point. In fact, I already lost, <laughs> I lost a little red part to this sand wall button. So I'm going to have to find that later. I'm sure it fell down somewhere. But anyways, look at the quality of the parts here. And now look at the latest micro switch inside of your Marvel versus Capcom 2 joystick. This is a huge improvement of design compared to the previous old versions that you saw uh, in the gen, even the Gen 3 one. So this was that Gen 3 design, still using just a big giant spring. This has upgraded micro switch internals that are the closest to a Sandlaw clone that we've ever seen from Arcade 1UP. So while are these, you know, 100% great, I don't know, it's still gonna be 100% up to you, but you can tell that the, the design improvements over the years have made the joysticks much better and closest to Sandlaw than we've ever seen. So um, that that was what I wanted to share and really kind of go through and and, you know, share a case that they have made improvements. They've really gone through the effort to make this a little bit cleaner and uh, more functional that's closer, closest to a sandwall than we've ever seen before. So I, that's pretty much my spiel that I wanted to break down and ultimately show you the guts of all these joysticks and hear your comments about what you guys wanna look at. Um, I will probably do a full installation tutorial um, in a separate video that's a little bit more broken down, but I enjoy doing these live to break it down and hear your questions and interact with the chat. So let's uh, let's really see what's going on. I missed a couple of different chats here. EPT Cyclone is here. Peter Griffin, $10 super chat says, Kong, pretty please. Have you or does anyone know that has attempted to hook up an arcade one-up pinball PCB to a Night Games pinball cabinet? I'm curious if it would work. Thanks for the $10 super chat. A uh, completely different topic than what we're talking about, but um, I don't think anybody has done this. And I don't know the reason why somebody would, you know, buy a PCB from Arcade One Up and try to put in that game's digital pinball. Um, that's a type of curiosity that I don't have to do. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to help you with that because you could pretty much play all the Arcade One Up pinball tables, which are just Steam tables, 
through at games legends over on the go gaming otg with the pc so i don't see a real benefit to doing this i would just go with the full pc chingo bingo says thanks for the info um it, it takes a little while for them to get back to you but i would just keep pinging them back and forth Protector says you got the first release mk2 you've been carrying sticks and buttons you can't wait to check out the sticks awesome sam ones are super easy to install that's right thank you for the two dollar 22 super chat how to batcher appreciate you they asked for video proof and whatnot and took about three days to complete so he's talking about um it went up customer service so hello all what's up bob single bingo says it's been over three days sam with an octal gate with the bat top let me know what your preference is hello Evening, evening. There's three screws under the speakers to remove, and then you got to take the entire thing apart. Not a pretty good deal. What's up? What's up? Let me just get back to <laughs> robot guts. All right. Why would you even bother making something like that? You could do it for the same money. Stock sticks didn't cut it for the Shingo Hadouken. You had to swap them out. I'm actually not having issues with the stock stick buttons for MVC2, but you're still going to swap them anyways. Uh, it's interesting because they're the exact same sticks, though. I think for the old classic games like Street Fighter 2 MK, I prefer using HAP IO sticks for those games for sure 100% over Sandwa sticks. But for versus games, I do enjoy my Sandwa's much, much more better. All right. They've improved quite a bit in your opinion. The sticks on your Marvel Counter Arcade are not usable. They're great, but nearly not as bad as the first gen ones that he's showing. That's right. That's right. All right. Uh, 360. Uh, so hold on. Carsa says, I just feel like Sandwa had MVC2 Marvel Super's limited edition caps next to each other. They felt exactly the same. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so when you were playing them side by side, you felt the sticks were the same. Yeah, so these these newest version of these sticks are the closest sandbox clones that we've ever seen from Arcade One Up. Um, I I think for I would say the majority of people that are quote unquote casual are going to be very happy with the joysticks um, that that you can play without having to do like a huge upgrade in performance. So I think. The only upgrade you would really technically need if you're you're if you're, if you're not planning to play super competitively online and you just like playing casual, I do think the uh, the stock joysticks in the MVC2 cabinet um, would definitely get you a really good decent experience. But if you want to have at least the best competitive advantage and the easiest install, the easiest joystick to install into the cabinet would be a Sandwall JLF. It does take a little bit of wiring to change this uh you know two four pin connectors from this five pin connector there's a couple harnesses you can get so i'll do a separate installation tutorial on how to get this installed and the encoder board's a little bit different than the previous ones that we've seen before um but yeah i do think that these are the closest you would feel to a sandwall clone um the stick i would say feels a little bit stiffer the sandwall stick just definitely has that nice light uh springy ten this is a really two pound spring so uh it moves a lot quicker and it's not as stiff as this one is, is one of the biggest differences here too. Issues with MBC2. I'm not having a ton of, of issues because I haven't been looking as intently for them yet playing MBC2 the game. I'm waiting for online play because I really, as much as I like playing the PC and the, the computer, I want to play against other people. So I'm kind of waiting for online experience to really dive back into MBC2 a little bit more. Um, so I haven't been noticing a ton of issues yet, but I play a lot of MBC1. MVC1 has played very similar to the very first cabinet that I have. I played over 100 matches on MVC1 on the Marvel's Capcom 2 cabinet. Um, I have been playing on Wi-Fi, though, to test out the majority of people playing on Wi-Fi. I played some games against Ray Plays Games and Easy Market. There definitely is known uh, internet lag using Wi-Fi connection. And it's something that people are going to have to deal with if their only connection speed is Wi-Fi for the versus games. I know that on um, Big Blue, when I'm playing that and I'm using Wi-Fi only, I tend not to have as many issues. But I think just maybe the speed of the game for versus games, that Wi-Fi connection lag, you'll 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 see it spike occasionally, even if you have really fast internet on both sides. It's 2.4 gigahertz connection. Uh, if you want to get serious about playing against the top top players most of the top 50 players are ethernet connected into their pcb directly um, so that they can play without lag all right let's see other thoughts here ray plays just got home from work to eat and maybe we'll catch you guys on mc1 take you for a ride that's right man what's up good to see that they're getting better now they can address the buttons ah yes i don't want to talk about stock buttons these buttons are absolute trash and you know what we do with buttons we just kind of toss them out because stock buttons are absolutely freaking trash 
Thanks for showing that. You wouldn't have gone that deep to figure it out. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for being here. What's up, Esmond? Have you ever replaced a spring in a sandwall stick with a tighter spring to make it feel like a half um, stick? Yeah, um, that is something that you can absolutely do. In fact, if you want to do that with the stock ones, you should be able to do it with the stock one or um, a um, or a genuine sandwall. So to replace the spring, if nobody's ever done it before, um, there's this uh, C clip here. You kind of have to press down the spring here, and then there's a C clip that you can pull out, and then we should be able to get to the spring. I think it's a little bit harder on this. Let me see if I can do it live. That would be interesting. Oh, shoot. Whoops. We had a disaster. My little light, my little light fell down because I pulled, I pulled the cable. That's okay. This is why we do it live because you know you you want to see something happen. I'm lo I've lost so many parts down here. This is not, this is not good. Um, but I was looking for a tiny uh, flathead, something like this that you can pull into the C clip and pull it off, and then we can get the spring tighter. So if you wanted to, for example, get this spring tighter, this is the stock stick. Uh, let's see if we can get there. We can push this down. Uh, we might need to be able to. I might need a smaller screwdriver to get in there because it looks really tight. That is really tight. All right, tight, 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 tight like a toyga. All right, here's another super tiny micro um, flathead. Let's see if I can get in there and pull this out. I actually haven't done this live. So this is why when I do live modding, I usually have a couple more ideas on what I'm doing here. Oh, this is really hard to pull out. How am I gonna get this down? Okay, that's there. Okay, there's the C-clip. There it is. All right. Ah, it went in. All right, this is really hard. See, you have to press down this actuator portion of it, expose the C-clip, and then use a flathead to pull it out. Thought this was gonna be an easy question and demonstration. Oh, there it goes. All right, I got it out. Okay, whew. so this is the, the stock spring on here. It's not that great. And in fact, I don't even know where my C-clip went. I think I might've just lost it. It might've just fallen out. Ha, I'm losing parts all over the place, but. <laughs> so this is a stick that's going in here. It's a little bit different. And this is the, the stock spring. So one thing you can do, you can replace it with a whole different spring. I believe I had a couple of sample springs here. Um, or what you could do is just take this string and like just literally stretch it a little bit. You just stretch this out. This is the cheapest way to upgrade and make this a tighter spring is just by stretching it and then replacing it back inside to make it tighter. So once you do that, put the spring back in, put the actuator back in, you will have a, a much tighter fit. And that's it, yeah. Except I don't know how this goes back together. But you get the idea. That's how you pretty much replace it into a tighter spring. Um, I generally don't mind a loose stick, but I know some people like the springs there. So that was a terrible demonstration. There it is. What's up, Headshake TV? First time you were here. You're addicted. Appreciate you being here, man. So your hap aisles are greater than sandwalls, Paul. Depends on the game that you're playing. I really do. I really think it depends on the game that you're playing. Fighting cabs definitely need a replacement, not so much on others. I absolutely agree with this statement that when you're playing a fighting game that needs precision, uh, sticks and buttons, that's absolutely the cabinet you need to replace everything. Dragons are cabinet, not replacing it. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cabinet, not replacing it on a beat em up. So anything that's just kind of casual playing and moving around, um, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't consider replacing any of those on on like a shoot 'em up type of thing. Um, but yeah, fighting games for sure. You have IL sticks lying around in your Hadouken cab. You like them so much, you might replace your sand walls with ILs in your custom Chun Li Big Blue cab. It's awesome. Big Blue Street Fighter cabinets. I definitely recommend IL haps. Marvel 360 Kongs. Have you talked about the maintenance for sand wall and stock sticks? Have you suggested anything for people to do if the micro switch would fail on them? And any potential solutions for that? Hmm. Uh, so for Sanwa's, again, like I showed earlier, there is replacement micro switches that people say they've purchased in, in case uh, their, their micro switch fails on them. So, I mean, you can replace it if you're good at soldering. This is a whole replacement little part here. They also not only have a replacement part, but I believe some people even have, um, and these are other micro switches, I think. I think they might even have like a full-on sandwall replacement 
PCB portion of it, Sanwa um, micro switch. Yeah, so they even do the whole assembly for you if you want the whole assembly with four micro switches and then this whole PCB board. So I think this is probably the easiest way to replace. If you have one micro switch is bad and you're good with soldering, you can buy the single thing or you can just replace out this whole sandwall assembly part, which is essentially this portion right here. And then this is what's going to, uh, you know, help you get fresh, fresh, easy daisy, you know, probably lube up the, the, the stick a little bit, but that's the replacement that you can do if you wanted to do some maintenance. So good question, good question. All right, what's up, Rhea? Thanks for being in here. Have you checked out the golden level joystick? I don't know what the golden level joystick is. Is that something that I should Google right now? I'm going to do it. Golden level joystick. I hope nothing bad comes up. Golden level joystick. Golden lever. Is that what you mean? The golden lever joystick. What is the golden lever joystick? All right. So it can be installed in most fight stick in the market without modifications. Golden lever. Ooh, $140 joystick. Holy smack. Why is this $140 for a joystick? I know I'm pretty cheap right now. Here's a golden lever. They have a nice, this made out of real gold. Japan setup, an Okta setup. You have laser and grazing. This is a part system. You can get millions of combinations to build. Starting point for a journey. It's the most fight sticks on the market. Why is, why is this so crazily expensive? Hmm. Maybe it just has really smooth Micro switches. Are they using like gold plated micro switches? All right. So you know from friend recognized smooth pet spots, one of the best apprehension. All right. Best lever to date. 40 years in arcade. Always feel strongly. No lever is perfect. All right. Um I I might look into this for just for for technology's sake, I've not ever checked out this and I've really stayed with the basics because I think that's what most people want. But if I get serious about fighting, um, I'm, I might look into that. Definitely will look into that for sure. Thanks for that. All right. Uh, is a special harness needed for Sandwall JLF to install in your MBC2 cabinet? This is a really good question. Okay, so in a future video, I do plan on doing an actual tutorial. I thought I would do a live installation tutorial, but right now there is a company called... Um, uh, DIY Retro and DIY Retro. Let me actually pull up their website right now so you guys can see it. So DIY Retro has something on their website that is um, a harness that allows you to plug in sand walls into your arcade one up. So DIY Retro Arcade 3 ohms three quarter scale, and they have sand wall sticks that you can get, and they have this plug and play harness. So there's a couple of different things you hear. There's a Wave Three. Uh, four pin with 12 inches of length or wave three double pin. So right now this wave one and two was your street fighter cabinets. Wave three is kind of your, um, you know, street fighter, anything and above, but uh, the latest wave of cabinets, this stick, I don't think Shane from DIY retro has updated his shafts to match this directly. And the reason why is that if you look at the harness that he, the way he has it, the way that the harness double connects, um, it's four pins that connect, right? And let me go back to just my big screen for a second. The the way that he has this connected is that there's one pin that set of pins that goes to right and left, and the other set goes to um, up and down. No, no, right, left. So this is right and left and then there is right and up for the other side the little sticker fell off so the way it's currently wired it's for right left um up right that's the two different ones so with that being said that's how the old cabinets work in marvel versus capcom 2 if you look at the pcb the way that they wired it now is that a single wire is now up and down and left and right. So uh, the wiring harness that's from DIY Retro is not plug and play anymore because they switched the encoder instead of being right, left, and then uh, up, down, or whatever it is, or like right, up, left, down, whatever it is, um, they switched it. So you do have to do some modifying of it to make sure that the direction that your pin is going is the right way that goes here. But note that these four pins are 
right left or up down and then right left there so that's why it's a little bit different there's no plug and play harness that you have if you have one of these for your sand wall you could pretty much just pull out the pins and then reconnect them appropriately so if you knew which one was the right pin and which one was the down pin you can just pull out these pins using a really small flathead screwdriver um, just like i did with this or like this right here you would press in this pin and you can pull it out and then that way you should be able to pull it out and then plug it back into the right way so that's if you're at least have a flathead screwdriver and you're comfortable with doing a little bit of modification you shouldn't have an issue with trying to just mess around with the locations um, of the sticks and you can pull out the pin make sure all four directions are set to go up down left right and then you should be able to just plug this back in and move it there so um I might reach out to Shane to see if he would update it for the, the latest versions of CAP because I'm sure some people uh, won't figure it out and will be like, why is this right left here and it doesn't work right now? It should be up down. Oh, is it right tab? Right left. Maybe I'm talking out of my ass right now because it says right left right there instead of up down. I am talking out of my ass right now. What does he say? That looks familiar. It seems super complicated. <laughs> Beware, the, you just need the right color wire to match up. Beware the five pin on the joystick. They might need to be for Yoga Flame. Unique design that they're doing. Better have real gold. Got here late. Thief Mega Switches versus Micro Switches use some games better for fighting games. You know what? I, I might have just been talking about it ass right now because I thought before that these were, were labeled differently and I thought it was like up, down, left, right. It's the same for MVC1. Is that right? All right, maybe I am dumb. Maybe it's already set up for up, down, left, right, and I was just talking at my ass right there. So ignore the last five minutes. I think this is correct now that these two are up, down, and these two are right, left. Yeah, that's right. Ignore me. See, I don't know everything. I can be able to. <laughs> it's the same. Yep. I, I swear there was an old version that was like when you plug this in here, it it wasn't like up, down, right, left. It was like up and then left, and then it was like right and then down. But um, ah, I I just uh, you know, talking at my butt. So yes, that would be a plug and play harness. I'll make a quick five to ten minute video instead where you can just take this and plug it straight in, and it should work. I'm all like, why does it say right, left, up, down? But um, it should be much. Easy plug and play. If you know the last five minutes that I said, the the way that the pins work, if it if it's plugged in a certain direction and you plug it in, it's like this is the ground, and then it goes right, left, up, down. That's pretty much it. Oof. That's it. C Marvel says you began making your own sandwall adapters at Kongs of Rust. What Shane is doing is randomly chooses which he decides to label either up, down, left, right, or he will label some left and right. Guess this is meant. The second time you wish you can join your show, but you can't make it home on time. You know what? You're right. You've never decided the micro switches before. Thanks for the info. Oh, thanks, Midlife Arcade. Um, there is a way to even just take the stock. If if you're handy with wiring too, the stock wires that go into this, um, these micro switches here. So there is a way to take that. These are the stock wires. Say you don't want to buy another wire harness. All you need to do is unplug these, and then there is a way to wire them into kind of the five pin connector here um, if you wanted to. So there's, 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 if there's a will, there's a way you can simply do it with um, either using um, a five pin connector harness like this that can plug in, and then, you know, just splicing some wires into the other end. You could, I think they also sell um soundball harnesses that are just open on the end that don't have any other connection points and you can just reuse those same connection points and you're just splicing two wires together so that's another option you have as well um but yeah there's different ways so i might make a couple of tutorials i might make one that's super easy where you just buy this already built harness and you just plug it in and, and make it work um, i might do one where you try to do your own wiring on the player two side so i'm hoping to make a couple of different tutorials to make it simple and easy but these live streams are just helpful to talk through questions and interact with the chat and realize I was wrong about the micro switches, not micro switches, about the wiring. I thought the wiring for sand walls was a little bit off. It's a uh, up, left, down, right. Oh, is it? So that was with the old A1 up stock joystick. The old A1 up stock joystick is 
up, left, down, right. You're all right. That was fun. You need a JST crimp and JST connectors. Yeah, oh, I definitely have those things. I do have a five pin JST HX housing. You're getting super technical, C Marvel, right? I know I have all the tools of the trade to be able to get there. Um, but I wanted to keep this show kind of somewhat short. I just wanted to explain a little bit about my experiences here. I do plan personally upgrading um, the joystick now that uh, my cabinet is all broken uh, with a sandball joystick and I'll test up some wiring. So maybe I'll quickly record how to uh, you know, plug in that wire and I'll get onto some matches. Are you guys interested in I know there's a lot of people that are watching right now. Are uh, are people interested in seeing me play the cabinet live and then have people join in lobbies? Let me know in chat if that's something that you're interested in. I know some people are asking if I can stream some matches, um, but I don't have the actual arcade split out to run HDMI, so we can't do high quality output, but I can definitely point a camera at it and we can go from there. But yeah, people... It's not broke. It's just uh, uh, in a different, it's here right now. I got to put it back together and put it outside. So people are saying, sure. Hell yeah. Play live. All right. And Kong is nasty at NBC one. All right. Anyone know which harness uh, the dirt gen counter kid uses? You haven't had your control panel a cart yet. Um, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm pretty sure it would probably be the gen three one still. Uh, if you're going to look for a wire harness for a Samwa too. Uh, cool. So let me set that up. Maybe um, I will end the stream now and then in about you know 30 minutes or so if you guys i actually have the stream to redirect to game time so you guys can check out the game time channel on the tech buzz she Lion gaming bill's retro gaming show and glenn's retro show they're talking about uh you know some good topics there um but in about maybe 15 minutes i'll go live again and just jump on the lobby so if you're there and you're ready and you want to play me on marvel versus capcom one I'll try to play the other games if anybody wants to. I'm not that great, um, but we can't play NBC too. But I'd be happy to play with you guys. And uh, let's go. Let's get in there. Join me and play. We'll do some live streaming of Marvel's Capcom 1 with my sandball. Let me put my sandball stick back in, and then we'll get there. All right. Thank you all so much for joining this week. Hope you guys had an interesting time looking at the breakdowns of the micro switches. It's interesting, right? The sandball micro switches that are here uh, versus what's in your RK1 up today. All right, thanks everybody for watching. Talk to you next time. Bye.